So this weekend in London, it was the Everything Electric show at the XL Centre. And I went down on Good Friday. It was a three-day event looking at all EV cars that would come in, manufacturers were there, stores showing new technology, stores from manufacturers with information about their new battery ranges and home chargers, everything to do with EVs. It was a brilliant day. I really recommend that if you can go next year, go and pay a visit. I was there for the full day. There really was not enough time to do everything that I wanted to do. So next year I may go for three. Anyway, I bumped into somebody. Well, actually I was watching them quite closely doing a presentation and I thought, I'm going to grab a few words with this person and I'm sure you will recognize them, especially those that are my age. This person is a very active person within the electric car universe. They have a fantastic YouTube channel, which I'll link to in the description. And they have a really good knowledge of the issues facing these within the UK and the wider world, but mostly UK focused, including home charger and public chargers, the rates, people with disabilities and so on. They really do know their onions when it comes to electric vehicles. So I had a quick opportunity to talk to Robert Llewellyn, who, you, like I say, you may recognise from the fully charged show years old and the original battery pack it was tiny 16 and a half kilowatt hours they've doubled the capacity of the battery they've increased the range enormously they've done a lot of work on the software it's amazing what they're doing because what is so important is to keep these cars going as long as possible and not throw away the batteries the batteries are being used in other applications so that is the original fabulous Mitsubishi IME and this is the fully charged show scrap heap challenge Welcome to Scrap Heap Challenge, where mighty metal monsters are majestically manufactured from mountains of scrap. Or if you're old enough like me, Red Dwarf. Safe. Ah, smug mode. And I posed a question to him, so let's go and have a look at what he said. Because I wanted to know, how do we get the message across about the environmental impact that battery manufacturers are having on the environment is not as bad as fuel petrol and this is what he said how two things one how do we get rid of this negativity around eb cars and all the pollution that cobalt mining kind of creates because you know you got this balance of no emissions but it costs a lot up front so yeah that's one of the other ones i have on the channel a lot is it's very unenvironmentally friendly and i just wondered how do we tackle that uh, uh, we, i think you have to do it with facts and so the two key facts are so there's probably two dozen different cars from different manufacturers in this room that have zero cobalt for one thing okay and their batteries quite a lot of them have no nickel so yeah, cobalt and nickel two of the most intentious metals that yeah. we use both those materials are used but in huge amounts in combustion vehicles in petrol the use of oil refining is greater than we use even in our phones so our phones have cobalt that but your phones do and also when an individual who is potentially funded by the fossil fuel industry starts whining on about cobalt they are not only lying yeah because that we don't use cobalt and future batteries won't use any cobalt but also the oil industry uses cobalt and very few people know that and i hammer on about that you know, but they use a lot of cobalt and it's used and also when people go, well, you've got to mine this stuff. We're extracting 110 billion tons of oil every year. And we use it once. We use it. Where does that go? It just goes. And when we're extracting thousands of tons of, of, of materials for electric cars, it gets used again and again. And it lasts much longer. I mean, there are people who go, oh, batteries don't. They last longer than a gallon of diesel. Yeah. I was watching the video yesterday where Tesla had done 210,000 miles. And the battery had 89% bag thin it still. It's done. 660,000 kilometers, which is about a million miles. And what the interesting thing about that was, which I think is the argument we need to use how, is that they did replace the battery after that. It, but it still worked. It just had reduced the range. And so they put a new battery, it was still under warranty. It was a uh, limousine. So it's used enormous amounts every day and rapid charge all the time, all the time. And they had to, but so you go, oh, they had to replace the battery. Oh, that's then he said, well, I think it's important to point out we've replaced the rear axle drive system, the steering all the tires this time and the seats in the interior the roof lining everything else shut no you'll throw the car away and i'm just throw argument 100 percent spurious and pushed out we're gonna 
So, so there you have it. And like I say, I do apologise for the poor sound quality. It was so loud in there that the microphone wasn't quite picking up the audio. When I've cleaned the audio, it's it's got rid of some of the, the speaking parts. But So basically what Robert said was one of the big things that doesn't get talked about a lot is that they use cobalt within the fuel refinery, petrols and diesels. They use cobalt for that. But they mine so much of it and it is only used the once. So for every litre of fuel that they create, they mine some cobalt. But that fuel is then burnt in your engine. And so when you go to make another litre of fuel, you need more cobalt again. Whereas with an EV battery, yes, the older ones do have cobalt in them, but it's in there and it's continuously being reused because the battery is charging. So it's continuously being used. And then when, like Robert said, with the limousine, when it came to change the battery because, you know, it had depleted range and, you know, like 666,000 kilometers, like half a million miles, they changed the battery. But that battery was still able to be used elsewhere because it was a battery. So that battery could be used somewhere else. Like I asked, you know, things like data centers, backup power for hospitals, places like that where these batteries have got a use. They're not much use in an EV anymore because their range has dropped so much, but they could run a small office for, you know, days potentially if there was a power cut. So when that cobalt is used for petrol manufacturing, then it's no longer used once that petrol has been made. That litre of petrol has gone. It's gone off to the pumps. That cobalt is then disposed of. And then more cobalt is needed for the next lot. So, yes, it's one of those things that people don't often talk about. And I'm really, really happy that Robert picked up on, on that. And that's the message. So, anyway, thank you for watching. If you've got any questions, please post them below. Please like and subscribe. It costs you nothing, but it really does help me grow this channel. And allows me to do all the things that I'm planning on doing. So, if you could, if you could help me grow, that would be brilliant. Thank you very much. I really do appreciate it. If you're one of those people that... The, the negative environmental impact of the batteries is stopping you from buying a car. Would this knowledge persuade you potentially? Or do you still think they're too environmentally damaging? Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Check out this next video. This is about a real world trip that I did in my EV and how much it would have cost me if I was driving a petrol car. So you can see what's there were. It really may surprise you. Thank you for watching.